Chris Lee and Blake Lovell here of Southeastern 14 set to preview a phenomenal Elite Eight matchup. Blake in one corner. We got the Coach K farewell tour, which is going strong after a really nice win over Texas Tech. Duke tough down the stretch in that one. In the other corner, we got the must bus. It has been careening all over the country, Blake. It's gone from Fayetteville to a bunch of places in the south. It, it went up to Buffalo. It's careened all the way back to San Francisco. It has taken no prisoners. It is stocked with the corn nuts and the zero bars, and it's ready for Duke. Can't wait to see this one happen. This one is going to be 749 Central on CBS. What are we thinking? Yeah. Um, listen, we – some people didn't like it, but we gassed up the must bus about a month and a half ago, and we said it was it was full. Like, it was completely gassed up, um, and we didn't think it was running out of gas anytime soon. And sure enough, still something in there. that um, G- Gas prices have not affected the must bus. It's that, affected that, everybody else. The must bus is immune to high gas prices. Premium, premium unleaded will get you far uh, in life, and clearly it's still working for the must bus. But um, all kidding aside um, – if you came looking for us to tell you that Arkansas has no chance in this game, well, we'll save that for uh, for others out there who probably thought the same against Gonzaga. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is yet another interesting and fascinating matchup for Arkansas in terms of, you know, just the style that you're going to see here. Um, I mean, look, I was very impressed. Let's Let's not say this any other way. I was very impressed with Duke against Texas Tech, that's a team defensively that I said going into this tournament that I thought had a chance to make the Final Four just based off of their defense. Now, yes, at times offensively, they they were not perfect, but gosh, they just if you watch Texas Tech play defense, I mean, they are just, they're something else. But yet Duke was able to find a way with a very balanced effort, you know. Um, You know, it wasn't just Ben Carroll. Like, it was Griffin, and it was Roach, and Moore, and Williams. Like, that's starting five, and that's kind of fitting, isn't it, going into this matchup that really it was Duke starting five that that pretty much carried them um, against Texas Tech. And really when you look at kind of how they want to play and and the the allocation of minutes and those kind of things, you know what you're getting. I mean, you're getting a team that's going to basically – go about six at most seven deep here um, in terms of, of how they're going to play. And it's just a really good offensive team. And who who else have we said that about, right? Like we said that about Gonzaga and different things that they could do offensively to put you in a situation, um, you know, to where, I don't know. I think actually one of the things that stands out to me, and trust me, there's a lot to talk about in this game and there may be something we leave out, but we're going to try to, as we always do, every possible angle here. I mean, this is a Duke team though, that if you're Arkansas in a sense, you know, you're not necessarily having to worry about that. Just incredible frantic pace that you had with Gonzaga, right? Like Duke's going to do a lot of their, their damage um, is going to be, you know, trying to get the ball to their guys that that we know who are going to be the guys that take the shots. And and we know who (laughs) primary number one is going to be on that. Um, but yet it's it's not going to be at the kind of pace that could really put you on your heels, which, again, Arkansas never really allowed that to happen um, just based on Gonzaga's, you know, fast break opportunities and those kind of things. So, boy, there's a lot to this game here, a lot of different little matchup nuggets. And, again, I'm, I'm probably just going to randomly throw in stuff along the way because there there's a lot you can look at statistically that makes you think, you know, how could this game go? Um, but, yeah, on paper, it's a yet another fascinating matchup here for Arkansas. Well, before we go into to one thing I'm going to throw out, and I think you're going to know exactly where I'm going, uh, the madness has officially begun. It's time for you to shoot your shot, score big on the nonstop action with my bookie. It doesn't matter whether you're filling up multiple brackets, betting the national championship win, or simply looking for player and game props. My bookie has you covered. Sign up today at my bookie. Use the promo code Southeastern to secure a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. It's simple. Put in $200, play with $300, use the promo code SOUTHEASTERN to claim your bonus. College ball, NBA, UFC, no matter the sport, no matter the minute, my bookie puts the action in your hands with live in-game betting. 
Choose from thousands of lines and odds. You can turn any game day into payday. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Okay. This is going to be a storyline, and you know it, and you know what's coming. Free throws. Arkansas has really gotten a lot done at the foul line this year. Um, J.D. Note spends a lot of time taking it to the rack and drawing fouls. That's a very important part of Arkansas's offense. Duke, on the other hand, Blake, has made 470 free throws this year, made them at a 74% clip. Opponents have only shot 434. So what do we make of this? Well, that would put Duke in the – terms. Of, I think it's – I'm looking at the per-game stats here. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on this because it's hard to read sometimes when you're seeing a lot of numbers in front of you. But per game, Duke, I'm seeing opponents, right? The opponent is making eight free throws per game and shooting 11.7 free throw attempts per game. Now, looking at this on sports reference, that would be third and second, respectively, nationally, meaning that what that doesn't mean that they are the ones that give up the most. That means the exact opposite, right? It means it's what you want if you're, yeah. So, not not what you want if you're Arkansas, but it's what yes, you want if you're let's Duke. make that clear. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, teams don't shoot a lot of free throws against Duke. That's, um, and trust me, I I, I already know that the, the jokes and stuff are coming on that, but that's just statistically what you look at here um, when you look at the stats this year. And again, I think too, that's some of that's based on styles and, and those kind of things. ACC wise, I think as well, that's another thing to keep in mind, but um, I do think there's more to it than just the the narrative of that. We know that sometimes likes to be brought up with Duke, but um, yeah, it's, you know, but I, I say that to say this, I thought Arkansas had to get the free throw line a lot against Gonzaga, and we said it last it night in the reaction matter. video. just didn't happen, and, and it didn't matter. Um, they were still able to put together a game plan that worked, and they were able to find a way to make shots. And that's where, again, I mean, it's this is another one of those games, guys, there's no other way to put it. Like, you're still going to have to execute your game plan, you know, as well as possible because it's just you're going to still need Trey Wade to come and hit some jump shots, which, as everyone said, I mean, we – you know, we always use the word X factor. Like we all have different opinions on what that means. I, I said, we were talking about Jalen Williams and Note. Any, the whole team was an X factor to me against Gonzaga. That's the way it had to be. And I think you're going to see very similar things here against Duke, who doesn't feel as much of a juggernaut offensively at times. But then again, you say that and you look at what they did, you know, kind of making that rally against Texas Tech, um, they can score the ball. And, and I think that's one, too, for Arkansas. You talk about how are they going to score the ball here and what are some ways they're going to be able to exploit this? Well, one of the ways is, just like Gonzaga, I think one of the things that's really going to benefit Arkansas here is, you know, you're not really going to be in a position where, sorry, I got to pull this number up again. I just, I'm seeing so many numbers right now. You're not going to be in a position against a team that's really going to force a lot of turnovers. Duke's not going to force a ton of turnovers. Statistically, we've seen that this year. It's just not something that's going to happen a whole lot. Um, so I think that plays in Arkansas's favor. And, and we said last, well, I'm, I'm not going to say last night because some people are watching this Saturday and all this, but against Gonzaga, there were a lot of possessions where, you know, Arkansas didn't have those careless turnovers. They, they were able to kind of get the shots they wanted. And in some senses, like we said, they're always going to see some bad shots throughout a game. But I think again, this will be one offensively where Arkansas will probably be able to, to do some things to where they get the shots they want. Again, you can look at it statistically and say, well, they still want to get the free throw line. Arkansas is second in the country in free throw attempts this year. They're, they're still going to want to get to the free throw line here. Even if, again, they were able to win against Gonzaga without it, I think you still want to try to make it work here against Duke. Um, because, again, it is a team rotation-wise, right, that's not playing a ton of guys. And, and we know coaches kind of shorten their rotations this year anyways, but or this time of year. So, that's going to be very important, I think, in this game. But I don't know that you're going to get the kind of pressure from Duke defensively that's necessarily going to put you on your heels if you're Arkansas. Now, that's not to say that this isn't a good defensive team. It's just I don't know if – like we said, let, let's compare, right? Like, let's compare Duke to Texas Tech. The amount of pressure you're going to get playing Texas Tech, I think, is much different and, and much more physical, I think, than you're going to get playing Duke. So I think that's – if you're Arkansas, to me, that's a bit of a win because – it is something where, let's say you play a game like that against Texas Tech, 
and it may still turn out to be the case against Duke, but let's say you play a game like that against Texas Tech where they're they're not calling anything, right? Like it's just all physicality, aggressive, and you're not getting the calls. Then it's like, well, those, if you're not getting the free throw line, then those twos become even harder because you're playing a team like that. But I think against Duke, there are some ways you can kind of navigate that a little bit. Now, again, I know we're all over the place here, but we're trying to hit everything. Duke's got size. Now, we know that, too. I mean, that's another one where you're talking about a team that's that's got some size, just like Gonzaga did, uh, where, you know, you're, you're, it's not the exact same, right? Which is, my goodness, I mean, again, you're not, we said Timmy and Homer, and that's just a, that's different. But you do have Williams. You do have Ben Caro. Like, you have those guys, 6'10", 7 foot. Like, here we go again. <laughs> like, it's kind of the same scenario in a sense. Not the exact same, but um that's why I think, you know, getting to the free throw line could be a challenge again, just based on all those statistics we brought up and all those things. But, you know, I think we've seen from Arkansas that I don't know that I expect all that to come from three. I mean, they hit what seven against Gonzaga, but if you can use your defense to turn into offense, we saw that against Gonzaga, how many sort of, I don't know what the number was. I don't have the stats in front of me, but, the breakaway opportunities off a quick steal. You're going to have to have a lot of those points again, I think, in a game like this against Duke. But I don't know, man. I just I think I look at this, and that Gonzaga matchup certainly seemed a bit more daunting to me than this one does, although I don't think we should underestimate Duke and say that, you know, at this point, you can say what you want about Duke. They're, they're not overrated if they're in the Elite Eight. And... You know, I think you look at it now and it just sets up to be a, a really interesting matchup uh, on paper between these two. Well, a few things, okay. Turnovers, Duke does not force a lot. It does not turn it over a lot. So right. how this happens, Same I don't know. Same with Gonzaga. Right. Same situation, yeah. Um, there was a good tweet um, Sam Vecini had about how much officiating had influenced the tournament. Uh, and how you watch some games and nothing's called, and some games everything's called. And so that's it's a huge <laughs> welcome, wild card. Welcome to SEC basketball. Yeah, I know. Um, and I, I, I hesitate to even go there, but just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Well. The other thing, you tell me if I'm overreacting. It seems like sometimes like we go through all these things, that this team does this well, and this team doesn't do this well. And that's going to be a factor. And I'm not saying it's not a factor, but it seems like in these tournament games that we have previewed, it's like we talk about all this stuff and you just throw it out the window in some of these games. Right. And, and that's, again, we're going to spend 30 minutes breaking this game down. <laughs> but we, we're not, we're doing this with everyone on a the same surface to start the game, right? Now, if someone comes out and gets two quick fouls, how quickly does the game change in terms of execution and game plan? very quickly. Um, so those are the kind of things that you can't really expect. Um, so I think that's, but to me, there are some things you can take away from this because like I said, with Arkansas, we know where the strengths are. We've seen Arkansas a lot this year. Um, you know, if you're a Duke fan coming in and watching this video, you probably haven't seen Arkansas play the entire season. We have seen them play the entire season and we know kind of what sparked the turnaround was the defense and how quickly things changed defensively for them from January 12th on. And and I think that's, again, that's what they had to do to beat Gonzaga. It was all about the defensive game plan to me. The offense was very important. But the defensive game plan was to basically, basically neutralize Chet Holmgren and you know be able to take him out of the game the way that they did. Yet, as we said, he still had, what, 11 points, 14 rebounds or something like that. Um, but he was not as big of a part of a game as he could have been. And I think that's going to be important here. Um, to, to try to do that, you know, look, if you can get one of Duke's big guys out of there, that makes the game a lot easier. Does it not? I mean, that's going to make things a lot easier if you can just kind of remove one of those elements. Cause like we said, to me, this is still a Jalen Williams game. Like it's, there've been a lot of Jalen Williams games recently. Um, this is still going to be one of those scenarios because you are talking about a team that's going to start six, 10 and seven foot. And that's why I think just. I don't want to say it surprised me because it didn't, but that was one of the reasons I think why no one gave Arkansas chances because they're just looking and saying, well, six, 10, seven, whatever. How, how can they do this? It's not possible. Well, they did. And I think this is kind of one where it's a different game. It's a different opponent, but 
I think there's a lot of stuff game plan wise you can use from the Gonzaga's game and basically just take it and put it right into this Duke game. And I think get the same amount of success. Um, again, the, the, the game plan is not going to be exactly the same, but there are a lot of similarities when you really think about it in terms of, um, you know, offensively, not from a pace standpoint, it's not going to be at the pace that Gonzaga wanted to play at, but I think that favors Arkansas probably a bit though, knowing that, that maybe there are going to be some more opportunities. Cause I mean, we, we saw it late in that game, right? I saw some people laughing, but it's like, you know, Jalen Williams just gassed. I mean, you think about having to play that many minutes and at the pace that you're trying to play against Gonzaga, you're not necessarily going to get that here. I don't think now that's not to say Duke won't take advantage of some fast breaks and those kind of opportunities, but that pace is not going to be exactly what it was. Um, so on the flip side, right. Does that mean I still don't know if for Arkansas, you know, they played at a, a quicker pace, right? We said that they, even though from a pace standpoint, could not match Gonzaga offensively. So they had to slow it down a little bit. They had to make the game more of a grind. I still think that's what they need to do here, even though it's kind of going to go against what they've done this season, where they have kind of sped it up a bit. Uh, but Duke does play at a, you know, a slower tempo. So I don't know. That That's one of the things I think is going to be interesting in this game. It's a matter of who wants to play what kind of tempo here. We know what Duke wants to play. Um, it, it's not it's going to be taking advantages of opportunities more than it's going to be just a full track meet that Gonzaga wants to play. But, you know, for Arkansas, what's, what's the best approach to that? And I think that's, that's another one where Muss has done a really good job game planning. And I think he'll, he'll kind of know exactly how they want to set this thing going into it. So, okay. Here's the question I want to ask you, because I think this could be really important as a point of comparison. Whose guards do you think Arkansas's match up better against Dukes or Gonzaga's? Um, I mean, that's a good question. Um, because that's, that's where I'm, I'm doing a lot of my thinking on this game. We, we said going in that we weren't as crazy about Gonzaga's guards. Uh, they'd had better groups in the past. I think that ended up being a big thing in Arkansas's win. Uh, but Duke, and let me just tie this into where I was going to go next. Okay, Duke statistically this year wasn't great. They were 14, 15. 13, and that range in the computers going into the tournament. But in the back here, you your head going, it's Duke. It's a young team. It's a talented team. they got, what, at least five NBA players on this roster, which, back to foul trouble, even if you get one in trouble, you got four more really talented guys at least to deal with. So there's that. Um, now I'm, I'm just wondering, the question I asked you still floating in the air how much do you have to account for the fact that, that Duke has just gotten better in the tournament? Um, you know, when in doubt, you, you probably bet the talent. And and I think if you're, you know, if you're, you're picking sides in a pickup game, you know, you, you probably are going to pick a few more Duke players out of your top 10 or 12 maybe than your Arkansas. Not, not to slight Arkansas, but you might say that against anybody, right? Just in terms of talent. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering where that intersection of, okay, the upside for these guys is here, but the performance has been a little bit down here where that comes together on Saturday, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I, I think, again, teams that – Duke, to me, got knocked, well, for several reasons. I think the North Carolina game caught people off guard yeah. at the end of the season. Yeah. But I think we're starting to realize – Carolina was pretty good. Carolina was starting to make their move. And I also think it was the ACC, like it or not. ACC was not great in the regular season, and that's just what it was. Um, so I think it, it knocked Duke because everyone's argument was they play in a league where they don't really have a lot of competition this year, specifically, because it was. I mean, it's a down league. Let's be, let's call it for what it was. But I don't, I don't think you can use that as the full body of to argue against Duke. I think it's you have to actually dive into the actual team itself and. Like you said, I mean, look, they've beaten I mean, Michigan State, not a bad team, and, and they were able to find ways to beat that. Texas Tech, like I mentioned, I would have picked Texas Tech to win that game, and I, I did, I think. Um, I just thought Texas Tech defensively could could find a way to you know, overwhelm Duke, and it just did not happen enough. Duke was still able to put up 78 points. They were able to still find opportunities and shoot 60% from two. Think about that against Texas Tech. That, to me, was the most impressive part, is they were able to shoot 60% from two against a team like that 
that, man, they are just a hard-nosed team to score against. See, th- this is the point. It seems like Duke is starting to transcend the transcend the numbers that it put up all year, and maybe the talent is just rising to the top. That that's probably maybe that's an overstatement. And the counterpoint that I would use, Blake, is that Arkansas has got J.D. Note, who's played more basketball in these situations, um, maybe than about everybody on Duke combined. And I think that's meaningful. Um. But sometimes you see in the tournament that that talent, top end talent wins out, and NBA players win out, and you know how many this. What was the stat for a long time that like nobody had won a national title without a McDonald's All American for maybe ever? Um, you you remember the stat I'm talking about? I'm shocked. I know, yeah, I don't I'm, really I'm shocked exactly we haven't talked down. about it in this tournament. But that's the standpoint to where if we're willing to accept that maybe Duke wasn't regular season Duke. Uh, that you've got a coach who, but by the way, here's here's another staggering stat. Mike Shashevsky won his 100th NCAA tournament game against Texas Tech. Now think about it this way, okay? That's like winning 16 NCAA tournaments and then going to a Final Four. That's how many wins that is. Yeah, and and I'm not I'm not dismissing Arkansas. I know somebody's going to say it. Uh, because again, we're go- we're going to get back around to everything, but I don't think you can do this honestly without bringing up these things. I know this is off topic of what you were just talking about, but I was I was trying to find a stat. You know me when I get when I start to see a trend stat wise, I just I lock in. We talking about the free throw attempts against Duke. No one, no one in the past five games has shot more than twelve free throws against them. So that's that's something to keep in mind here, and that's like we said, that's why they're second and third in the country. Like we said, in free throws made, attempted for opponents per game. Let me see if you can anticipate my next question. What's that? Do we know who's calling the game yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't. Um, <laughs> that that could matter. There, there's. There's one name out there that uh, if he's on the repeat call here for Arkansas, I don't. Oh, I think I know who you. I don't know how they're gonna feel about that, but um, yeah. our, our friend that we've seen a lot this year in the SEC, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. But I, I think that. But listen, that's not just. I know it's easy to say that, but if you actually watch Duke play, it's not just the officiating aspect of it. I think it's just they well, are pretty. Let, let me let's let's be they're honest. When when you have NBA talent across the floor. You're probably going to be matched up with guys who can't guard you, and they'll be grabbing on the jersey as you get by them, or you know, do, doing something to get an advantage. I mean, I, I don't know that. I know how that's going to play when we talk about that. Oh, Duke can free throws and fouls, and everybody's going to go one place. I, I know, and and, and it, you know what? And I think I think some of that's fair. I mean, the the, the icy stare of death from Coach K has drawn a foul call or two across his coaching history but I you've think also that goes got for a lot of teams well though, it, it does but you've also so. got Paulo Bancaro who's a top three guy in the draft who just is a transformational guy that you know we, we have seen teams in this tournament you know you go back to Carmelo Anthony if you think of just that guy that carried a team on his back and, and then later had one of those careers I mean I don't know that he ends up being Carmelo Anthony but it could be I mean a different player but Point being, if Duke were to win this thing, um, we've seen the mold for this before. Now, now where where it kind of falls apart is defense. That they have not been that great on the defensive end. They're forty seventh nationally in adjusted defensive efficiency. That was a reason going to this tournament. A lot of people said, "I just don't see them as a legit contender." But you've always got to have in the back of your head the makeup of the talent who's coaching them. I mean, there's a first time for everything. Look, if you want to say, what are Duke's biggest strengths? What are Duke's biggest weaknesses? Here you go. Let's just do it from a statistical standpoint. All right. They're fourth in the country in field goal percentage. Very effective on the offensive end of the floor. But, you know, Gonzaga was very effective too, but Arkansas found a way to use its speed. The 50, 50 balls, those kind of things. They're going to be a big, big deal in this game too. Very good there. Um, And look, that goes for, a lot of different areas, right? They're 16th from two-point field goal percentage, 35th from three-point field goal percentage. So a pretty 
again, a pretty balanced offensive team in terms of just, just the pure numbers. Let's just look at it from a number standpoint. Okay. That's what you get with Duke. They're also, um, you know, when you look at it in terms of like they're a team that's going to block some shots, right? Because they do have the size. They do have Ben Carroll. They do have Williams in there. They're, they're going to block some shots. And, and I think that's where, again, for Arkansas, you know that going in. Not that unlike, you know, home run blocking shots and those kind of things. And we mentioned like the Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith comparisons, those kind of things playing Auburn. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are these are just things they do. Duke's a top 10 team in the country in terms of points per game. Averaging 80.2 per game. Um, we talked about the free throw situation. Those kind of things certainly stand out. Um, so, so I think that's that's something certainly to keep in mind here uh, when when it comes to that. And, and free th- I mean, turnovers, we said Duke's a team that's not necessarily going to turn the ball over a lot either. So that they're the same things we, we kind of mentioned in Gonzaga. I know they're different teams, but like these are the things you have to attack if you're Arkansas. And I think we saw them do that. They knew they had to force turnovers. And what did they do? They forced turnovers. They knew they had it to to kind of be handsy, right? Like they had to have their hand everywhere. Like you had to be active, kind of like Texas Tech, but in a different way. Like, and they remember we saw there were several times. Remember when let's say Timmy got the ball in the post or or someone, where what did you see? You saw Arkansas send a guy from the next guy over or the opposite side. They send a guy to go running at him and he just poked the ball out and they get a steal. Those are still some very similar things I think you're going to have to do in this game against against Duke. And again, statistically, that supports it, knowing it's a team that doesn't turn the ball over a lot, very efficient in their shooting percentages and those kind of things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's just kind of what it comes down to is those are some things you're going to have to exploit to be able to, to beat Duke. You know they're star players, but this can be a team just, what did we say? Arkansas, it took the entire team to beat Gonzaga. It was a total team effort. Kind of the same way for Duke against Texas Tech. Like there are a lot of different guys that can chip in in different areas. So that's why I really like this matchup because you do have two teams that they're they're not going 10 deep in this game. They're probably going 7. You know, Duke maybe goes 8. I don't know. It's it's a very you know the guys are going to be playing on the floor. And I think again that's where foul trouble and those kind of things could match up here and and come into play, but great defensive or excuse me, great offensive team in Duke. Um, they're very efficient on that side of the floor and, you know, it's just one of those things. I'm looking at our friend, Eric Haslam, Haslam metrics. He's got those really interesting nuggets of information that you can find with some of these games. And let me just read off some of the curious trends here. And you tell me if you think any of this fits. Um, one of the curious trends he has for Duke is when playing teams, that allow a higher number of conversions off of the offensive class. Duke usually performs performs worse than average. Um, so that's one of the ones to, to keep in mind here. Um, also, it says Duke is typically worse against teams that fail to defend the efficiently inside the paint. So that's another interesting kind of curious. That's why they're called curious trends. So if you're looking for like the really deep insight, like these are things you'll find uh, Haslametrics.com, which is really, it's a tremendous resource um, for stuff like this. So, I, I don't know what to make of that. I'll tell you what but, I'm thinking. But it is interesting. Like, it is. Yeah. But what, what I'm, you know, the next thing I was going to say, Jalen Williams has been such a headache for everybody to try to oh, handle yeah. because you 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 almost can't get him off the floor. Yeah. He he plays all the time. He he doesn't foul out. He's he's a double double machine. I mean, he's been, you know, I, I don't know how many times in the last two and a half months he hasn't had a double or three months he hasn't had a double double but you can probably count it on one hand yeah um you know he had a lot to do with fouling Chet Holmgren out the other night all these Tony another name we hadn't brought up kid can really defend um never gets to headlines because he's not going to pop up and give you 25 but but he will give you you know four or six from the field and, and be out there and do everything Stanley Mude, you you guys know that have watched this, was one of my favorites in the league this year. I thought he was the most underrated player because he can pop up and, and do so many things and give you a big scoring game. I mean, we spent a lot of time on Duke, and part of that is because if you've watched us, we have talked God knows how many hours about Arkansas this year. I don't say that in a bad way. They've, they've deserved it. But I think the point of this video was to try to educate a little bit, um, especially if you haven't watched Duke. Um, and, and to give you some things to think about, but, um, 
th- those things have been a problem for teams. They were problems for Gonzaga, and they're going to be issues that Duke has to deal with too. Yeah, I mean, we're we're spinning this towards Duke because we know that the majority of the people are going to watch this are Arkansas fans. And I think Arkansas fans know what to expect from their team. And they saw the game plan against Gonzaga and they understood. And, and we said some of the things we didn't, we didn't say everything in our preview with the Gonzaga, but we said a lot of the things we said, look, here's what they have to do well to win. If you're Arkansas. And and they did those things well. And, and I think it's, the, it's, I, I want to be careful to say that it's the exact same with Duke and Gonzaga, because I don't think it is. But I think there's a lot of things you can take away from what you did against Gonzaga and do the same thing against Duke, and I think you'll get the same type of success. Um, because I think it's just, it's more of the style to me. It, it's it's how you have to play. Not necessarily, I don't know if that makes sense, but like it, to me, it's it's how the game is played, which will determine a lot here for Arkansas. Yeah, and they, that's where they I think can, it, they can wear you out and frustrate you in no time. Yeah, and I think I'll, I'll cap off by saying this. This is still a Duke team that's, what, Chris, pretty inexperienced from the standpoint of you're still playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores here. And from that standpoint, I think because we've seen Arkansas kind of – some of these guys have, again, like Note, how many big games he played in now? Jalen Williams, like it's just all these different ones. And, yeah, and it's I think that's one of the things, too, to to keep in mind here is Duke's still going to – they're as talented as can be, but they're still going to start four underclassmen. And, you know, that can certainly take teams very far. And and absolutely, you know, Duke could come out and play really well here and win this game. We're not saying that at all. But it, it's I think it's going to be for Arkansas. Can they can they rise to the challenge again here, knowing that there are a lot of things, similarities in terms of scoring wise with Duke and those those punches again, right? Like those Duke, if they get on a roll, they got enough offensive firepower to be able to put up some points. But you know, I saw the game plan that Eric Musselman implemented against Gonzaga, and it worked to near perfection. If he implements a similar game plan here and they execute it in the same way, Arkansas's got a really nice shot to, to win this game. So, Join the thousands of sports lovers playing stakes, the sports-themed social media network dedicated to everyone from the fanatics to the casual fans. Stakes is a place to prove your knowledge and win prizes and bragging rights by wagering and making predictions against your friends. Other sports fans, even some of your favorite social media personalities like us, sign up, use the code SOUTHEASTERN14 to wager with us at Stakes. That's S-T-A-K-E-S. You can find it in the App Store. Help us out. Help us help a partner. Uh, These are great guys at Stakes. Love their app. It's a lot of fun. Again, it costs no money. You can make some bets for bragging rights or whatever. Win some tokens, trade those in for NFTs, and, and just have a really good time. And again, it costs you nothing. So get, sign in today, download the app. Again, use that promo code and, and help everybody out here. Um, I heard an interesting comment on the radio in Nashville this morning. This is from, I think, Todd Furman, um, who's a big betting analyst or whatever the word is. And and, and he was asked about the, the coaching in for Duke. He said, I think that Coach K at this point is is more of a a better CEO than than a floor coach, which I thought was interesting. I don't watch enough Duke to tell you whether that's true or not. But what you just said about Eric Musselman sparked that thought, Blake. I mean, he, you can look at this and say, you look at it however you want, okay? But the fact is, we've gone into games and we've said, Arkansas needs to do this, this, and this. These things may need to go right. And a lot of times those haven't happened. J.D. Note hasn't always been efficient from the field. The free throws haven't always been there. The three-pointers haven't fallen, whatever. And and yet, here's Arkansas, still there. And we talked about how much of a grind they made it for Gonzaga. And we pointed to coaching. We said he did a tremendous job. And I think that's a a mark of a pretty pretty good team when, when everything doesn't go your way and you're knocking off the prohibitive title favorite to me that that says something and as much as I've leaned Duke man I'm the, the more this sinks in the more I think about experience uh, it, I'm, I'm kind of feeling Arkansas in this one I mean look it's the same situation Arkansas fans know I mean uh, again I everyone if you I mean I know Arkansas fans probably jumped onto our channel late but 
I was one of the people way back when I said, listen, I just think something's missing, right? I said this from the start of the season. I said, I, I just, something's missing from this Arkansas team. And I'm very curious to see if they find it. But realistically, since they found it in, in January, I mean, they have, they have been as good as anybody out there. And I think that's one where, again, even the one point loss at Alabama, the four point loss at Tennessee without Adis Tony. The game against A&M, I think conference tournaments, I don't necessarily put as much stock into some of those sometimes just because, like I said, I think you just you catch conference a team at the Conference tournament apparently meant nothing this year. Well, but if you catch a team at the wrong time, like A&M, I mean, it's – Right. I mean, we saw that. That was – Well, that I mean, was, I mean in terms of predictive stuff, it didn't have a lot yeah. of carryover. Yeah, and I think that was a lot more about A&M than it was anything. Um, so, but the, the body of work over the past two months or more now – um, it's been as good as anybody just in terms of what they did. And I think they've been tested. Arkansas has been tested so much down the stretch that that second half of the schedule, there was no one in the sec that played a tougher second half of the schedule. So it kind of, you know, that's what I said going way back. I said, in a sense, maybe that's actually a good thing because if you look back on it, they were tested so much down the stretch and that has kind of paid off here in the tournament, I think, because you're seeing a team that's kind of battle tested. They didn't flinch when Gonzaga was up eight in the first half, you know. And like we we mentioned, that's where you are two minutes away from being down seventeen or eighteen, and then it's really hard to flip that game. But they never let it get to that point. And I think as long as they just kind of keep doing the things they've been doing and make this a grind, like they have to keep using their physicality, they they have to keep using their speed. Because I think they are, I'm going back to the word I use. I remember when I first used it, I'm like, that's the right word. Arkansas is a disruptive team. Like they will disrupt what you want to do. If they do that again in this one, yes, I think they've they've got a good shot to win this game. Um, and, and I'm what at the line. I, I think the line will, line's, line's around like four. four. Yeah, so I'm, clearly I'm taking Arkansas plus four in that scenario. So Okay, Blake, tell folks about our partnership with Action 24-7, and then I want you to give your, your gut-level pick whether the must-bus advances to the final four. Action 24-7, promo code um, <laughs> SOUTH14. And uh, description below, click on that link, use the code, first deposit, match up to $800. In that one um, – yeah, you can bet on this game. You can bet on all the other games. I, I kind of, like what you said, I, I really thought about it, and it is like, man, there's just something about this Arkansas team at this point where... Blake, on, honest to God, I was going to pick Duke, and I changed my mind as we talked about it. Well, I just, to me, I think it's because you see how how effective Arkansas was implementing the game plan. And that's and that's really, what did it for me. See, and I, and I think there's a lot to that. The experience edge you're going to get to Arkansas here because they do have some guys that have been in these games. I mean, think about it, right? Like you've got J.D. Note a senior, Stanley Amude is a senior. Um, you know, all these different guys. Trey Wade, I mean, who again I think will once again be an X factor in this game. Uh, if Trey Wade plays like he did against Gonzaga, I think Arkansas absolutely wins more than likely. Uh, you know, just based on assuming there are no other wild factors anywhere else, but. You know, Jalen Williams is a sophomore that plays like a <laughs> plays like a senior. I mean, really, when you think about it, I mean, he's just he understands his role and understands what he has to do. So, I really think they're gonna. <laughs> I do like. I I think this is another one where I'm just thinking, man. A lot of people have been doubting Arkansas for. I mean, really, I think it's just to me what was so glaring, and everyone kind of said it. And and look, I get it. I've said this before. Not everyone has a chance to watch every SEC basketball game, but we've had the luxury of being able to do that this year for the most part. And I think you see some of those things. When everybody's riding off the SEC, where only Arkansas is the only team in the Sweet 16, they got the toughest matchup, you can still find those things to say that this is not going to be as straightforward as it seems. Because, again, we've seen this with Arkansas. They've They've taken a lot of hits this year, but... Man, this is a team that I mean, I think back even Chris to that Tennessee game in the regular season. They were down huge in that game, weren't they? And they came and they back and they darn near to, won. To make a shot to win it, like they had a chance at the end. And this is just a hard nosed team that I mean, you gotta enjoy watching. Okay, let's I mean, let's it, it let's really go is. back before that, okay? They start 0 3 in the league. 
at that point, I mean, I, I don't even know. I, I don't pay a lot of attention to January bracketology. I'm not sure if Arkansas even started making it into brackets until February. And, and if it did, it had to be very, very dicey because Arkansas had not really not racked up any big wins till February. This team has been playing almost as if its tournament life depended on it since mid-January. That's a lot of pressure, man. That's a lot of pressure. Um, again, everything is not going its way with the draw, with with shooting, with all kinds. I mean, J.D. Note missed 20 shots, and they beat Gonzaga. Yeah. They, they've just, yeah. they have just overcome at every point. Well, and they've got some added motivation here. 1994, you beat Duke to win the national championship. By the way, I had to look this up. Coach K was already in like his, I don't know what season that was, but like he was a veteran at that point. That would have been about 15 or 16. 94. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not <laughs> um, quite. He took over 80, 81, so. maybe before that. Uh, 80. Took over in 80. Yeah. Um, I was looking back, I was thinking, my gosh, this guy was already a veteran in the coaching ranks in 94. And here he is now, you know, still doing it. <laughs> um, but think about that. It worked out for Arkansas last time. These two met in a high stakes NCAA tournament game. And wouldn't it be something if it's um if it's Arkansas to to end that career of Coach K? Um so yeah, it's I, I'm really excited for that. Look, I was excited for the Gonzaga game, but I, I think about like the history and everything involved with this one. This is um this is fun, man. It's just again, this is why we love the NCAA tournament. It's just all this different stuff. And for teams now, you're one win away from the final four. And what what an unbelievable to go from where Arkansas was in January eighth to where they could be if they win this game on Saturday. Remarkable. Just just remarkable. So we'll see. There there you go. I know we rambled a lot in this call, video. Call I'm your sure. shot. People accidentally pointed out, I'm going to take Arkansas. Okay. I just think the way they game planned against Gonzaga, I saw what I needed to see. And I think if they are in a similar situation here, uh, how can you not trust the team that just beat the number one team in the field? Um, to me, there's just something about it. <laughs> you know, I really like, I just, there's something about a team that just knocked off the top seed in the tournament. And I, I, we always talk about kind of that emotional hangover, that letdown. There's too much at stake now. I don't see it. I think that this is, you're one win away from the Final Four. And you are going to be doubted yet again. Like, everyone's going to pick Duke here. I truly believe that. Um, but as you can see from the line, a lot of people starting to realize that Arkansas is, that they're here for a reason. They didn't just luck their way through a, an easy first two games, which I saw pointed out a lot. But that was not the case. So I just think, I think they're battle tested. I think it sets up nicely. I think there are a lot of similarities matchup wise. I think there are a lot of things you can do game planning from the same extent to win this game. And I think the physicality is very important. Like it or not, how the game is called is going to be very important here. Um, yeah. So I, I I'll, I'll pick Arkansas. If you had told me in mid January, we'd be picking Arkansas to beat Duke and make the Final Four, I would have said you were nuts. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean we, listen, we, I, we did not even know if they could get it together to make the tournament at that time, but what a turnaround it has been. I didn't pick – I mean, I didn't pick Arkansas against Gonzaga, but I, as we talked about, we were one of the few that actually said, even if we don't pick them, we're telling you that they've got a good shot here. They just got to – they've got to do ex – execution has to be nearly flawless. And it was. So, could they do it again? Absolutely. Uh, it's just a matter of, again, Duke didn't get here by accident. Duke didn't get here by the referees, no matter what anyone tells you. Duke got here because they're a really good basketball team, and there are going to be a lot of challenges for Arkansas to try to win this game. But I, I, I saw a team that already had a lot of confidence heading into Gonzaga, but, man, a team coming out of that, knowing that they just did what they did, it's a hard team to pick against right now, in my opinion. So, Blake, I'm I'm going to say that we will probably do a live stream if Arkansas wins this thing not well, long afterwards. I think I'm we have sure. to. Yeah. We we may do it even if they lose. Um, yeah. Yeah. So because it will, 
we'll, we'll see. So, no, we appreciate everyone, and, and I'm sure there will be a lot of Duke fans that will come into this, and I'm sure there will be some back and forth in the comments, but, hey, I I respect all teams. Duke, that Duke fans, we respect eight. your team. We respect your coach. So, uh, there you go. It's, it is it is what it is. Somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. You got Duke sent a good team home on Thursday night. Arkansas did the same. Um going to be a blast we will have that covered one way or the other when it's done we're keeping an eye on baseball hit that subscribe button that way you get notified when we do go live and we'll see you again um probably saturday